bought the GoSports billiard table, seven foot model, about eight months ago off of Amazon. I've been playing on it most days since, and I wanna give you an honest review of every component of the table, every accessory that comes with it, so that you can decide whether or not it's for you. Personally, I will say at the outset that I do recommend buying this table. I've had a lot of fun on it, it's improved my game. Whether you're you know, looking to be a professional player, a league player, or just have fun at home with your family, I think it's a good value for what it costs. However, I will say that there are a few things that you can change around on it, customize, modify, that will help improve your experience with it, and I wanna share those with you in the video. Uh, let's take a look. It's built as a seven foot table, just like those most commonly found in a bar, most often made by Valley, or if you're lucky, Diamond. These are known as bar boxes. However, the playing surface actually measures slightly smaller than those bar boxes. An average bar box's playing surface is six foot six by three foot three. This Go Sports table is six foot two by three foot one. So you lose four inches on the long side and two on the short. It doesn't sound like much, but if you're used to playing on bar boxes, the Go Sports definitely does feel noticeably smaller and a little more crowded when you're playing. The manufacturers recommend giving yourself 13 feet by 16 feet around the table where you have it set up. I found that to be an accurate estimate in my home, so definitely plan for at least that if you're getting the seven foot model. The shipping weight is 183 pounds. Getting this thing up four flights of stairs was, well, I didn't do it, the movers did, God bless them. It's 183 pounds. It's billed as portable. It's in the name of the table. It is not portable. I mean, it's more portable than a table that you actually have to build and set up. However, we've moved this thing once. I hate moving it. Unless you have a team of he-men around that don't mind, plan on leaving it set up. Onto the felt. I find the felt to be one of the cheaper aspects of this table. On your average pool table, your felt will feel like a soft canvas sort of material. This feels more like a velvet, velveteen sort of thing. Um, you can trace your fingers across it and leave trails in it, which I've never seen on a proper pool table. This felt is much less resilient than the felt that you would find on an average pool table. Uh, I've got burn marks in it from breaking. Uh, I've got a few holes that I've put in it uh, from taking stupid shots that I shouldn't have. I've been playing on it for eight months. It has held up decently but it is impossible to refelt. This whole table is held together with glue and staples. So no going in, it will not take that wear as strongly as your average table. But once again, it's a $600 pool table. This is what you're paying for, for better or for worse. Now, the pockets are actually one of the most interesting and challenging aspects of this table. The pockets measure four and a quarter inches, which is actually on the narrow side compared to other tables. An average table's pockets can be anywhere from four and a half to five inches. These Go Sports pockets are actually the size that the pros play on in professional tournaments. This means that you'll have to be more disciplined in your shots, especially in terms of accuracy and speed. These pockets will improve your game unquestionably just based on their size. The pocket inserts themselves are curved plastic cups. So in some instances, if you shoot the ball too hard, it will bounce right back out at you. Figuring out the proper speed is crucial if you want to have fun on this table. The inserts are held in by staples, which over the course of time can come loose and protrude out of the pockets. Several of my billiard balls have nicks in them as a result of being gashed by those staples. I eventually got tired of continually pounding the staples back in, so what to do? Here's one of those customizations I mentioned. I went out and bought a roll of adhesive leather, most commonly used to patch rips in leather couches. I think it ran me about 10 bucks. You can cut the leather to the dimensions of the pocket cups and stick them right on. So far, so good. No more nicks and hitting the back of the pocket actually makes a much more satisfying sound now. The net pockets themselves are also held in by staples and they haven't done me wrong yet. If one pocket is getting fuller than the others, I will go and pull balls out so just as not to put stress on it. And I won't leave the balls in it overnight, but they've held up so far. The rails. The rails give me true kicks and true banks every time I shoot them. I'm astounded, honestly, at how reliable they've been. One interesting note, though, the edges of these rails are squared off rather than pointed like every other table. My guess is that that is to allow more playing area, but it works out. They're the proper height and measurement as any other standard table, and it's one of the aspects of the table that I've been most pleased with. 
The legs and feet feel a little flimsy, but they haven't done me wrong yet. Another modification that you will want to make is that the braces that lock the hinges rattle. They rattle on every shot. My solution to this was just to pack a little bit of cardboard from the box in between them, and now there's no more rattle. The feet are fine. Uh, they're adjustable. You rotate them up and down on a thread, and I haven't had any problem finding a true level balance with the table. The slate. The slate is not slate. It is, as best I can tell, plywood or a very heavy plastic. As a result, I have found that the middle is sagging a little bit. We'll take some shots and get a weird roll off of it every now and then. Um, I've looked into finding a fifth leg to put in the middle to prop it up, but I haven't found any solution that I'm happy with yet. These weird rolls can be frustrating, but once again, it's a $600 pool table. This is what you're paying for, for better or for worse. If you're finding this video useful and you do end up deciding to buy the table, We'd really appreciate it if you use the link in the description to buy it. The set of balls is fine. They're perfectly fine. I've seen similar sets online for somewhere around $100. So realistically, 100 out of the 600 you're spending on this is for the set of balls. Quality pool balls are made of phenolic resin, a compound also used in brake pads and countertops. The resin is very resilient, very grippy, and resists picking up dirt. These balls are made of a composite polyester. Compared to the resin, they get dirtier faster and take scuffs more easily. But the nicest set of phenolic resin balls costs as much as this table. The one modification I've made that I do recommend above all else is to buy a better cue ball. You will notice the difference immediately. If you have to have one quality ball in this set, it should be the cue ball. I've purchased the Aramith Super Pro. It's about $35 and so far worth every penny. It has a beautiful weight and balance to it. It's much more resistant to scuffs and dirt, and it's easier to clean and maintain. It's also a pretty popular cue ball to find out in pool halls and bars, so it's beneficial to have a sense of familiarity and comfort with it. And now onto the cues. Quite frankly, this is the worst cue I've ever tried to play with, and it's the cheapest feeling thing about this table set. It's imbalanced, it's back heavy, uh, the shaft is not finished, the tip is terrible, and it feels like shooting with a broomstick. I highly recommend shopping for other cues. You can spend thousands of dollars on a cue if you want, but there are quality budget cues out there that you can get for around $100. If you're going to spend a decent amount of time playing on this table, you owe it to yourself to get a proper cue. If you absolutely have to play with these cues, you should get yourself a tip tool. I know, I know, I'm recommending all this gear. This video isn't intended as a shopping list. It is my honest opinion on how to get the best experience with this table. And you will not have a good time trying to shoot with this cue in its original state. These tips are flat and completely unshaped. Any normal, proper pool tip is rounded and sanded down. The tip tool is a convex, rough piece of metal that allows you to shape the tip. In a pinch, you can use sandpaper. Either way, definitely do something before you try to use this cue, if you use it at all. Onto the rack. Uh, it's a plastic rack. You've seen them before. The other piece of equipment that I would recommend getting if you're gonna play on this table is a different rack. It's pretty difficult to get a proper tight rack with one of these triangle racks. And on a table this small, a bad break results in a lot of bunching on one side of the table, which ultimately results in a lot of frustration for everyone. This is a template rack. It's a flat laser cut piece of fabric uh, that allows the balls to slide into the grooves and it ensures that every ball is touching before you break. This gives you a much better spread around the table and it's a hell of a lot more fun than just trying to pick apart a big old bunch of balls. This is the chalk that comes with the table. You get two pieces. It's most similar to the light blue master chalk. It very well may even be that with a different label on it. Everyone has their own preferences as far as what chalk they use. This should do you just fine. The table comes with a brush. It's a brush. It's fine. It works well. It's full of cat hair right now. It's held up totally fine over the last eight months. Uh, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's a brush. And now for the cover. Trick question. It doesn't actually come with a cover. 
Because this thing is so hard to move around and you're likely gonna leave it set up for a long time, I absolutely recommend getting a cover. The one we got is a Claws brand cover specifically made for people with pets. It ran $40. It's laminated on the inside. They say it's waterproof and it has a resilient canvas on the outside. We have two cats in the house. One of them absolutely loves sitting on the table and the cover is absolutely invaluable. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed learning about the table. Again, I absolutely do recommend it. The Go Sports table is a great option if you're just looking to have fun in your basement or if you're trying to improve your game and don't feel like going out to bars or pool halls all the time. Again, if you do decide to buy this table on Amazon, please use the link below in the description to buy it. It helps us out a lot and it'll help us to make more videos like this. Thanks a lot for watching.